Hey guys, what's up? This is Leo Hightower, aka Leon, up once again on YouTube with another video game spectacular special video. Today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show off my Super Nintendo and of course my Super Nintendo games. The Super Nintendo, or SNES as it's known by many. I could have done this about maybe a couple of weeks ago if I had also known about the SNES's anniversary being around that time, but oh well, beggars can't be choosers. But anyway, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show off my Super Nintendo, my uh, Super Nintendo games, and uh, I'll be showing off uh, just about anything else I can think of that gives me great memories of the Super Nintendo, one of my game favorite video game uh, consoles of all time. Not count, count, I mean, besides counting the N64 made by Nintendo, and of course the Nintendo Entertainment System, or the SN, or the NES. So, what can I say about the Super Nintendo? Hmm. The Super Nintendo Entertainment System, also known as the Super NES or SNES, is a 16-bit video game console that was released by Nintendo in North America, Europe. Australia, Oceania, and South America between 1990 and 1993. When the Super Nintendo released in North America, after much hype and anticipation, its revolutionary technology and serial games lineup absolutely blew competition out of the water. The Super Nintendo Entertainment System was Nintendo's second home console following the Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES. The console introduced advanced graphics and sound capabilities compared with other systems at the time. Additionally, I'm sorry, additionally, development of a variety of enhancement chips which were integrated on Game Boy circuit boards helped to keep it competitive in the marketplace. <clears throat> the SNES was a global success, becoming the best-selling console of the 16-bit era, despite its relatively late start and fierce competition in it faced in North America from Sega's Genesis console. The SNES remained popular well into the 32-bit era, and although Nintendo long, no longer offers factory repairs, replacement, or accessories for the console, it continues to be popular among fans, collectors, retro gamers, and emulation enthusiasts some of whom are still making homebrew ROM images. This was one of my favorite video game systems of all time, and some of my favorite games can be quoted to like A Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, Killer Instinct, Super Mario World, Illusion of Gaia, Final Fantasy 2, aka Final Fantasy 4, and Final Fantasy 3, aka Final Fantasy 6, and a whole lot more to boot. The SNES is a system that anyone who grew up in the 90s should have played, and if you and if they haven't, they should definitely try and play emulation versions of it on the computer. They should definitely try and download emulators of Super Nintendo and download the Super Nintendo ROM images and everything. You don't have to take my word for it, but just download the ROMs and emulators and see for yourself. Super Nintendo is definitely one of the best, uh, greatest. Nintendo consoles of all time. But, enough talking about the, uh, game, sy game system for now. Why don't I just show off my game system and, uh, show off all the games? So let's do that right now. Stay calm.
Alrighty, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show off my Super Nintendo and of course all the controllers and everything that I uh, have with it at the moment. Just one minute. Alrighty, here it is in all its prime and glory. My brother and me's, well I should say my brother Kevin and my... Ah, screw it, I'll just say it. This is our Super Nintendo right here. As you can see, the color hasn't faded on it or anything like that, like most systems probably would if they got exposed to sunlight, but here it is in all its glory. And power switch right here. Eject button for your pop popping out the uh, games. And of course the reset button for when you want to reset. Little slot right here for uh, the games. And of course the logo, Super Nintendo, right here. Here is the front of it. It's for the controllers, controllers 1 and 2, and there's the little power light right there to show when it comes on and everything. Here's the uh, back of it with the little help number on it with Mario and the little tool case on it. Little slot right here for using a, a multi like the Nintendo GameCube and uh, N64 adapter uh, port for when you want to plug in the TV adapter, channel changer button for when you want to change the channel uh, 3 and 4, and of course, the plug adapter. I gotta keep this plugged in at all times and wiggle it sometimes to get the system to cut on, because a small piece of the uh, thi uh, thing right here, it sort of came loose. I don't know how it happened, but uh, at least the system works and it resets and everything. And of course, here is the back of it. With the uh, FCC and uh, everything, yada yada. And of course, the extension part right here, All right, next step I'm going to show off the controllers. Alrighty. Here is one of the Super Nintendo controllers that me and my brother usually use whenever we're playing the game right here. Simple SNES controller with purple buttons and everything. Start, select, yada yada, D-pad. L and R buttons. Let's show the back of it real quick. Right. Wrap that up real quick. Alright, and next up is my Super Nintendo controller. It's, of course, the same type of controller and everything. The only difference is with this one is it has an L mark on it right there. Like I said before in my last videos, I usually put lipstick marks on anything that's mine. I don't know, my sisters got me into doing that sort of habit back then, used to putting lipstick on anything that belongs to me or marking with a permanent marker. That's This is my controller. Simple standard in Super Nintendo controller, only difference is it has the little L mark to show it's mine. Wrap this one up and put it aside. And right here is, let me just unwrap this. Uh, Super Nintendo controller I got from Toys R Us a couple of years ago. This is my high performance uh, This is my uh, high frequency Super NES Turbo controller right here, which I got from Toys R Us uh, back then in the late 90s. As you can see right here, the buttons have colors and everything, and the L and R buttons are also located uh, right here. Here, there's L and there's R right here for uh, if you don't want to use the shorter buttons at the top. Has turbo settings for all the uh, buttons A, B, X, Y, L, and R. And of course, there's the uh, turbo start button right here. Control layout is the same. This is see through and everything, so you can see the wirings. The L button and the R button. The R button is a little bit flimsy. I don't know how in the world that happened, but uh, still works like a charm. Sort of like my GameCube controllers, the R buttons are flimsy, but the button still works. It's not broken, it works just like a charm. I like this little controller for whenever I, whenever I, need, it, whenever I need it for specific reasons. Just wrap that up. And next up is the SNES mouse pad. I mean the mouse. For games like Vegas Stakes and uh, Mario Paint and Mario and Wario. 
There's the front of it and there's the back of it with the little uh, roller ball. The left mouse button and the right mouse button. I love using this mouse on some games. Well, with what little games I can use it with. And last but not least is uh, the mouse pad right here. There's the Nintendo logo right there. And here's the back of it. Okay, oh yeah. One more thing, real quick, is the Nintendo RF Switch. Let me just get this out of the way. This is the, uh, basically the, uh, the control deck for when you plug into the back of the TV. We've had this for about since 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 the day I've been practically born, we've had this for a long time and it still works like a charm too. There's the front and back of it. The uh, cord. And of course, uh, the end which you plug into uh, the Super NES or the Nintendo. Still works like a charm and everything. I, I rarely use this because of the multi that we have with uh, the Nintendo GameCube and uh, the uh, Nintendo you know, 64. But overall, that was my Super Nintendo uh, system. And now, for the coup d'etat, the Super NES games. I hope you guys like them. Introducing the next generation from Nintendo, New Super Mario World, created especially for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. It's a bit more exciting, a bit more challenging, a bit more graphic, a bit more colorful, a bit more realistic, a bit more levels, a bit more secrets, a bit more enemies, a bit more friends, a bit more sound, a bit hotter, a bit cooler, a bit weirder, a bit more revolutionary, a bit more Mario, a bit more of what you want. It's 16-bit, and it's yours only if you get New Super Nintendo. Now you're playing with power, super power. And now today's traffic report from Super Mario Kart. It's a real race out there today, folks. People are driving like animals. The turnpike split in two, and a turtle shell is making travel impossible for one motorist. Over on the freeway, it's bumper to bumper, door to door, wheel to wheel, you name it. And check your rear view, some blockheads are causing major delays. There's already been one accident there. And watch out over on I-94, a banana peel is making things a little slippery. And that's traffic. With two players split screen action, you've never been in a race like this. Super Mario Kart, only for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. No wonder the best play here. Alrighty, now for the coup d'etat. I will now be showing off my Super Nintendo games as well as some of my brother's games, which are also in the collection. Also note that none of these games I'm going to take out are going to be in alphabetical order. They'll be pulled out randomly. I got my uh, big blue bag of Super Nintendo games right here, so uh, let's get started, shall we? Alright, just reach in here and uh, pull out a game. First up is one of the few games we got on Super Nintendo back then when we first got it. Ultraman Towards the Future. This is one of our first Super Nintendo games ever that we got on the Super Nintendo besides Super Mario World. A decent little game based on the uh, popular superhero from Japan. Ultraman! Decent game. A lot of people don't like it. I like it. Especially because it's one of the easiest games I managed to beat back then when I was a little kid. Next up is... <clears throat> one of the most popular fighting game franchises from a certain company who shall not be named anymore because we don't like it anymore. Street Fighter 2. This is the SS, the Super Nintendo version right here. And uh, me and my sisters, we used to play this game a lot back then when we still had the Super Nintendo back at my mom's house. One of the very few fighting games I could play back then. But I can't play it that good anymore. What the f I can't play it that good anymore. I'm supposed to be usually good at fighting games nowadays. Seriously, WTF. Anyway, moving on. Next up is one of my favorite games of all time on the Super Nintendo. And of course, the one that got me started on the franchise. Kirby Superstar. This was my first eight games in one. This was my first Kirby game of all time on the Super Nintendo right here. 
and it's the main reason why I got into Kirby back then. I didn't know a whole lot about Kirby, but when I started playing this game, I liked it. I liked playing through all eight games, especially getting all the way to the arena boss rush battles. It was fun. And uh, I managed to beat it before my sister or anyone else could. Fun game. The DS version is very fun too. But I got the original right here. This is the original. And the battery pack save system still works. It's awesome. If it wasn't for that game, I probably wouldn't even be playing Kirby games right now. Next up is another Kirby game on the Super Nintendo. Kirby's Avalanche! I watched my friend Spar and her brother play this game one night on Ustream, and it was just fun. I got this game a couple of times, I got this game maybe a couple of years back when I remember playing, playing it on the Super Nintendo emulator back at my mom's house. It's fun. It's basically just Puyo Puyo, oh, but with Kirby characters and everything on it. Still, the game is nice. Next up is... Uh, this one right here. One of the most greatest Super Nintendo games of all time. Possibly one of the greatest Super Nintendo games of all time, and the one that got me started on the franchise, another one that got me started on one of the popular franchises, even though we had the original on Nintendo. Super Metroid. This was possibly one of my first few Super Nintendo games, along with uh, Super Mario World that I played back then. First we rented it, then after that, uh, we, I, I ended up getting a copy, and uh, my sister was the one who first beat the game. Especially, it was the one game that I found out that Samus was actually a woman all the time, and my mouth just dropped. Seriously, my facial expression was like... Just like that when I first saw it. I'm like, damn. She's hot! Samus is a... a woman! Wow. <laughs> but still, one of my favorite games of all time on the Super Nintendo, possibly one of the greatest Metroid games of all time on the Super Nintendo, they should probably remake this game with added dialogue and whatnot, but the gameplay is fine, just fine. The highest pr percent of uh, clear data I managed to get on this game was maybe 88%, especially getting the best ending in the game where you see Samus without a power suit on. Now that's saying a lot. 88% in under two whole minutes. It's under three minutes, I mean, of gameplay, or three hours. Now that's big. Next up is yeah, this one, made by Acclaim, though I can't say I really like this game that much, a lot of people don't like it. The Sega Genesis version is much more superior. The first Mortal Kombat game. No blood, the fatalities are completely toned down, and it's just, ugh. Thankfully, the second game fixed all that. Seriously. The Sega Genesis version is better than this one right here. Get the Sega Genesis version! <laughs> Hate this thing. Hate it. Next up is... Oh, this game right here. I'm currently doing an LP of this game, but it is on to be continued, dude. Until further notice, one of the greatest Mario games of all time, by many, cult classic. Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. I practically begged my aunt so many times to try and get me this game even though I didn't know what the heck it was all about and everything, but for some reason something just told me I had to have this game. And it paid off. Even though my sister was the one who beat the game the first time around because she was an RPG queen back then. But overall, I'm glad I got this game. I'm currently doing my LP of it and I hope to continue it sometime in the near future once I get a new controller and everything. Still, this game has lots of memories. He's, I have a lot of memories with this game. From when you first start the game to when you first find out about the seven stars, especially finding about the hidden boss. The <laughs> Kulax! <laughs> it's just awesome. Next up is... Another one of my favorite Super Nintendo games. Based on the popular cartoon series back then, which used to come on Fox and everything. Tiny Toon Adventures! Buster Bus Loose! This was originally my sister's game. We got it for uh, Christmas in the uh, semi-late, semi-90s, somewhere between maybe 95 or so, I can't remember. Good 
good, fun, classic game, especially because it's made by Konami. Great music, great gameplay, everything. It's great from beginning all the way to the end, especially if you beat it on the hardest difficulty. I managed to beat it on all difficulties. And I'm like, wow, this was an easy yet fun game, especially because it's based on the cartoon. The music and everything is just great, and it's fun to play as Buster Bunny or play some of the bonus games to earn extra lives. It's great fun! You should try it out. Try and find this game and download it if possible. Next up is another game from a certain company who shall not be named because we don't like it anymore. Fun little uh, fighting slash wrestling game. Saturday Night Slammers, and this one features Mike Hager on it. Fun little wrestling fight slash fighting game. Very nice, especially when you play two-player mode. Uh, hit favorite characters on it, of course, Mike Hager uh, and Scorp, or Scorpion as he's known. I like the game. Nice, simple fighting game. Rented it so many times back then, well, my brother was the one who rented it a lot, and I got to play it a lot when I was at my cousin Draylon's house. Fun game. Next up is one of our favorite fighting games of all time, which gave Mortal Kombat a run for its money. A rare, rare title, Killer Instinct. We had the Killer Cut CD a while back, back then, but I don't even know what happened to it. I think my brother lost it. Great fighting game. They should definitely do another Killer Instinct game. Rare, are you listening? We need a new Killer Instinct game! Forget all these Easter eggs in various games and stuff like that with Killer Instinct cards! We need a new Killer Instinct game, damn it! Loved this game so much. Loved it. I just loved it. Cinder was my first character to play with, then after that I moved on to Orchid and other characters. Great game. I hate it fighting against Idol, though, especially Full Gore and Spinal. Damn bastards. <laughs> Next up is, huh, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game, which gave uh, Street Fighter a good run for its money because it was challenging and fun. A lot of differences between this one and the Japanese one. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Tournament Fighters. The Japanese version had a few things added to it, such as uh, the female ninja character's uh, chest bounced a little bit and a few other things, and she's wearing a short uh, outfit and whatnot. Especially because the the turtles had different voices and stuff like that. Fun fighting game. Gave Street Fighter a good run for its money and everything. Awesome. Rented this game so many times back then, you wouldn't believe it. <clears throat> okay, next up is... A rare gem, in my opinion. By Squaresoft. If you haven't played this game before, shame on you. It's a rare gem, though, but I can understand if you haven't. This is one of my sister's favorite games of all time for the Super Nintendo. Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. The battery pack in here still works to allow you to save and everything. And this was one of my sister's favorite games of all time. It was unique. It was fun. It's good for those who are getting used to RPG games and everything. It's awesome. My sister... Man, I found it one day at Game Exchange for the low price of about 19 bucks. But my sister was the one who got it as a thank you gift, along with a thank you gift for me watching over her kids one day. Fun game, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. And if you haven't noticed, if you're watching this from DA, I have Mystic Quest character sprites made, by, made from the character sprite generator for RPG Maker VX. Take a look at those sometime if you ever get a chance. Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. Next up is... an Enix game. Edelbean is doing an LP of this game, and I'm enjoying it so far with the random uh, humor in it. Illusion of Gaia. I like this game, and it was also one of my sister's favorite games of all time, too. She practically kept it even after the due date of returning it to uh, one of the video game stores and beat it all the way through. I don't think she found all the red gems, though. If you can't find all the red gems, you fail at life. You fail! <laughs> But still, Illusion of Gaia, great game. Just wish the translation was a little bit better. Still, good game though. Next up is... Ooh, an LJN game. Angry Video Game Nerd hates games made by this little rainbow-symboled company. But this is an okay game right here. It's 
Spider-Man and Venom, Maximum Carnage. Great beat-em-up upside scrolling game. Just wish it was two-player. That's my only pet peeve with this game, especially when you get to the Fantastic Four hideout and you try and fight that boss. Hard as f**k. As you can see, this cartridge is red colored. I think this is a rare cartridge right here, because I got it around the time of my birthday back then. Still can't beat it even after all these years, I don't know why. I suck. Anyway, next up is... The, the other Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game on the Super Nintendo. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time. I like this version over the arcade any day. Even though the arcade version was pretty cool and everything, but this one made a lot more sense by uh, changing some of the bosses and everything. And instead of just going through the sewers and Shredder randomly teleporting you through time, you arrive at the Technodrome and you kick Sh Shredder's butt, who's hiding behind a stupid monitor, and then he teleports you through time. I just love this game. It's it was a rare occasion I got anybody to play this game with me back then when I first got the Super Nintendo when we first had the Super Nintendo. Still, great game. I consider it better than the arcade version in every way possible. But the only difference is, the arcade version didn't have Super Shredder. This one has Super Shredder in it, just like the Hyperstone Heist boss battle. Next up is... Ooh! A mashup of all the M Nintendo Mario games onto the Super Nintendo. Super Mario All-Stars. This was one of my sister's games on Super Nintendo. And uh, it was fun just playing through it, whether you're playing Mar Super the first Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 2, or Super Mario Brothers 3. But the Super Mario Brothers The Lost Levels? Hard as <laughs> Hard as <laughs> Excuse my language, I don't mean to cuss throughout my videos, but I'm telling the honest truth. I have watched my friend Spar and her brother try and play The Lost Levels, and even though they beat it, her brother still failed at the game, falling off of cliffs, running into the fireballs and everything. The video for the, uh, when they played this, hilarious. It is hilarious. <laughs> but fun, fun, fun all around. Okay, next up is... Ah! Sequel to the first game that came out on Nintendo, one of my brother's games. Super Punch-Out! Bald Bull! Super Macho Man! Mr. Sandman! And Nick Bruiser. Awesome sequel to the first Punch Out game, Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Great game worth playing. I think I managed to beat the game way better than my brother did because I managed to beat it without losing and without retiring either. It took me a good while, but I managed to beat Nick Bruiser without getting the time over for, uh, on either round, and it was great. I don't know how I did it, but I did it. Great game. Next up is one of my uh, one of my second first uh, Super Nintendo games of all time, based on the popular Nickelodeon Nicktoon back then. Rin and Stimpy, idiots! You idiot! I am going to kill you, Stimpy! Good game based on the cartoon series by Nickelodeon. And, I mean, from Nickelodeon includes at least maybe uh, four stages full of great uh, full of your favorite stages from uh, from the cartoon the boy who cried rat uh, Stimpy's invention in the army now and of course maroon I wish the game could have been longer and the uh, credits and when you beat the game and everything the credits actually gave you something for your effort but instead eh, it's not too much worth it unless you play the sequel and you have someone to play with it you with it Still an okay game, I guess. Next up is ah another cons another uh, franchise first for me. I didn't even know who he was until I started playing this game. Donkey Kong Country. This was my first Donkey Kong game ever. I didn't even know who Donkey Kong was until I started playing this game. And, and for those of you who might be bitching about about that, and screw you. I didn't get to play a lot of games back then until I started coming over here to my aunt's house, but Donkey Kong Country, this was a birthday gift for me, and my first uh, Donkey Kong game ever. It was awesome playing as Donkey Kong or Diddy Kong. 
I managed to reach the final boss and beat the game before my sister, but she made it far throughout the game. She made it further than I could, and that's saying a lot. Still, great game. I never did get 100% on the game, but if I ever play through the game again, I'm going to look for those hidden bonus stages, because I desperately need to. Great game, though. Next up is the sequel to Donkey Kong Country, Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy Kong's Quest. And my sister was the one who beat this game the first time. I begged my aunt desperately to get this game after a, uh, after four whole months before Christmas, because I just had to play it, especially after seeing the commercials so many times. Great game. Haven't found all the DK coins, but I managed to get first place on the uh, character pedestal after a long period of playing. Found a lot of DK coins. And of course, I managed to uh, unlock the lost level's final boss, which is saying a lot. Anyway, moving on is the last Donkey Kong Country game before moving on to Donkey Kong 64 Dixie Kong's Double Trouble. I have not gotten 100% on this game yet, or found all the banana birds, but I'm getting on there. Good game, though. Expands the game a little bit more, and heck, heck there's also the showing of the N64 in the background in Wrinkly Kong's uh, little hut, uh, which is fun. <laughs> it's a shame, though, that Wrinkly Kong passed away after Donkey Kong Country 3, but you still get to see her in D DK64. Nice game. Next up is... Mario Paint. Not exactly a game, but more like a g creator. And you need the mouse... I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. You need the Super Nintendo mouse and mouse pad in order to play this. You can't use it with the controller. Great game. You can create art on it, do music compositions, create animations on it, everything. Great game. And if you're tired from all the painting and everything, you can use the mouse to play Nat Attack. And that is a fun little game. Mario Paint, good game. Rare gem. Glad I found it. We used to have Mario Paint back then, but when my sister sold it, I'm like, dang it! You sold Mario Paint? No, no, no! Good uses! Still, but when I found the game and for sale at a game exchange, I had to get it. Cheap price of only uh, maybe 20 bucks. Low price of about 20 bucks, especially because it had the game, the mouse pad, and uh, the instruction booklet come along with it too. I still got the box and everything. It's just put up right now. Good little uh, game right there. Next up is one of the considered one of the greatest Zelda games of all time on the Super Nintendo. Excuse the case because it had a bunch of tape wrapping on it. The Legend of Zelda: A Link to the Past. One of my favorite games of all time for Super Nintendo. My s and this is the player's choice one right here. Sorry you can't see it because of the tape and everything that's on it. This is the player's choice one. My sister had The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past at least maybe three times? Yeah, about three times. And she lost the first two copies uh, throughout certain periods of time when I was growing up. This is considered probably one of the best Zelda games on the Super Nintendo ever. And it shows from when you first uh, adventure out into the Hyrule after saving Princess Zelda, or when you first adventure into the Dark World and go throughout the different temples collecting the crystals to save all the maidens. Great game. Great music. Great gameplay. Everything. I have this version, of course, and of course I have the Four Swords Edition, which is on GBA. Solid Zelda game from beginning to end. Awesome. I actually still have the map which shows off uh, different tipples and Hyrule and everything, but I can't find it anywhere. Next up is a solid title right here, made by Acclaim. We used to have it on Sega Genesis, but now we have it on Super Nintendo. It's Super High Impact! Great solid football game title, It'll, with lots of arcade style uh, graphics and everything. It's like a retro version of uh, NFL Blitz in a way, or maybe this is where NFL Blitz got its start, knocking off uh, players' helmets or knocking off their uh, football gear and stuff like that, getting into fights and yada yada, and awesome uh, graphics and everything for its time. The Sega Genesis version is very good too, but uh, I think this is the better version right here. 
Next up is a solid title for me on the Super Nintendo, Secret of Super Mario World. Great game, had it for all these years and I'm glad I still have it. Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. I've had this game since the late, since 91 basically, and I managed to beat this game without any help or anything. Great solid title, awesome game. Although I did have trouble back then trying to beat the Piranha Plant bosses uh, stage because I didn't know you were supposed to throw your water, uh, your eggs at the water and hopscotch them into its belly button. I was a stupid kid back then looking at it now. <laughs> but still, great game. And when I beat it, I was more than satisfied, especially with the ending. A great feeling. A great feeling from this game. Alrighty. A few more games. Next up is another game by Acclaim, solid game, one of my brother's favorites, and one of my personal favorites, though I like the Sega Genesis version a little bit better, NBA Jam, Boom Shakalaka, he's heating up! Great solid basketball title game. The only difference between this one and the arcade version, if I remember, is that you can play Michael Jordan on the arcade version, yet why can't you play him on this version? That's so, that sucks big dino <laughs> Wait, where did I hear that from? Damn you, Brunta Floss! <laughs> Still, good solid, uh, game, in uh, NBA, in uh, NBA Jam, but I can, but I like the, uh, Genesis version a bit better, especially because the Genesis version has music when you play through certain stages. Next up is... Ah, uh, this game. I've been a fan of this series for a good while but I don't like some of the other games. I wish I had the movie video game, even though it wasn't too good. Pa Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Nice, solid uh, side-scrolling beat-em-up, where you control one of the five rangers going through different stages, and when you get to the boss, you morph and you kick their asses. Nice game. Wish it was a two-player beat-em-up game instead. The only two-player part of this game is when you get to uh, enter in the code that lets you takes you to a special uh, versus mode where you play as the Megazord and one of the enemy bosses. The only downside to this game? No Green Ranger! No f***ing Green Ranger! Why? Ugh. Still, nice game. Just about done. Next up is sequel to the first Mortal Kombat, made by Acclaim. And Midway. Mortal Kombat 2. This game kept all the blood and fatalities in it and everything. Great game. I only came, I only beat the game at least maybe three times throughout the time my brother has had it, and uh, it's a great game all the way through. Great. Nice fighting. Nice game. Nice sequel. Next up is. If you're a fan of the first Tecmo Bowl, you'll love the Super Nintendo port. Super Tecmo Bowl for Super Nintendo. Great game all the way from beginning, from when you first uh, play through the preseason, all the way to when you play through the actual season and beat the game. Great game too. <clears throat> we have a little trouble trying to get it to play sometimes, but a little bit of some alcohol and some blowing help out greatly. And last but not least in my little Super Nintendo game box. Oops! Sorry about that. I'm so glad I found this game back then. The first... Star Fox game, complete with the Super FX chip. The first Star Fox game. I'm so glad I found this game on sale at Game Exchange, because when I saw it, I had to grab it. I played through just about every Star Fox game, except for the addition of Command and the 64DX version, which is on 3DS right now. Still, great game to start the Star Fox series. The Super FX chip shows how uh, awesome it is and everything. Great uh, shooter. And uh, basically, this is where Star Fox started from. Now, I first played Star Fox 64 before or this game right here, especially uh, when I first got the N64 for the Christmas of 96 or 97. Awesome game. Very good game. Challenging though. Very nice. Overall, 
Those are all the Super Nintendo games that me and my brother and sisters have had throughout the years. But what I want to show you right now are the games that are no longer in the collection or that we used to have a rent. So let me just pull that up. Thank you.